Hey YouTube, in today's video, I'm gonna do something that I've been thinking about doing for several years now, and that is adding an after cooler to my air compressor to try to cut down on some of the water that makes it into the tank, and then ultimately out into the shop and to my air tools or, or whatever. So stick around, it's not a long project, didn't take very long at all. I'll talk about the pieces and parts that I used, um, and show you what I did. So this is my Eaton air compressor that I've had for 14 years now, I think. I think I bought it around, I think I ordered it in March of 2007. I actually got delivered, took delivery of it May 2007. So right at 14 years. So this spring, or since it's spring, change an oil, put a new air filter in. Um, and then I am going to add an air cooler, which as most of you know, goes in between the pump. So we'll come out of here, go around to the back of the uh, guard to the cooler, come back into the tank here, at the check valve. Um, well, I'm going to come out of here, out of the pump, the other side of the guard into the cooler, out of the cooler, into a water trap that I'm going to hang right here, out of the water trap, into the tank there to check valve. So that's the plan. So this mark I made right here is where I want the cooler on the back side. So I'm going to measure three and three quarters. Now I want to measure and see where this falls. Three and three quarters, so about right there. That'll give me a reference to where I want the front of this front of the cooler. Basically, mount it like that right there. Now I was going to make a bracket to mount this, but I decided to get 
one of the oil cooler mounting um, kits. Let's see how that works. Save uh, save time. So. Won't save a lot of time if it doesn't work like I expect it to. Now, each one of these pads. I'm not taking the sticky back off of these pads because I don't want them stuck to my trowel. But I am making sure the part that doesn't have the paper is going to be against the back of the cooler. Works just like a zip tie, basically. Hold tight. That. It's good and tight. I'm going to trim these off. I'm leaving them a little long for the moment. I don't know. I don't know if they can come off, or if I would need to take them off, if I could take them off, if, they, if they're reusable, I have no idea. But I don't think I'm going to need to take it off. But Once everything's done and in, installed, and I can go back and give them a final trim, basically even with the little things that hold it. So, all right. So that was much faster than making a bracket. Or two brackets to, to mount this so we'll reinstall this and get on to some plumbing Here's what the old one looked like after it came out. So I had to replace it. Bending tube, tubing is not my specialty, so um, I'm sure someone will have an opinion on whether I was doing it right or wrong. But I was able to get it accomplished, and that's that was a, that's all that's important to me. The fittings I used are just some standard compression fittings that you can get from any big box store, any plumbing supply place. And then to go from the copper tubing to the oil cooler, I used some AN fittings. I used an, an AN fitting that goes from hard line to um, to A in style. So I'll leave a link of 
the fittings and, and things that are used in the uh, down in the description so that way you can look them up and and see what I used so Well, here's the updated version after adding the after cooler. See right now when tanks at zero, we're gonna turn the compressor on and let it fill up and uh, see what temperatures come to on these spots here. This is coming out of the pump into the check valve and tank. So, you come out of the pump, used to come straight out of the pump, down to here. One little short tube. This guy right here, just like that. So, come out of the pump. And we go to the back behind the shroud, which is gonna be kinda of hard to see because where I have this located. But, let's see if I can get back there. The after cooler. is mounted back there now you'll notice I'm using a stacked fin oil cooler instead of the tube and fin or whatever it's called so then it comes into the top there and will come out of the bottom here and then copper tubing around and into this water filter. It's the one that auto drains when it gets so full, gets to a certain level. Then it comes out over the water trap, water drain, whatever you want to call it, and up and into the check valve and into the tank. Hopefully that will take some of the heat out of the out of the air and moisture out of the air before it hits the tank. Um, I decided to try the stacked fin oil cooler just to see how it worked. Um, it may not work at all. If so, I'll have to change it. So the fittings on in here is just your standard compression, a three quarter inch, a three quarter inch elbow compression three quarter inch my my compressor uses half inch ID five eighths OD copper tubing that's what was the original between the pump and tank so I, I stayed with that um, three quarter inch water filter um, so I tried to just keep the same size all the way through the Um, oil cooler let me see if I can go around here the oil cooler back here that is a is an AN10 inlet and outlet oil cooler so I let the compressor run with an open air hose for about 20 minutes these temperatures are about 15 or 16 minutes in that's the pump output or outlet. This is the inlet of the oil cooler. We're in the 200 degree range. That's the outlet. So we're down to 80 in the 80s coming out of the oil cooler. This is the body of the air trap. So we're still around upper 70s, 80 degrees. This is the top of the tank. The room temperature was about 66 degrees. And this is the check valve. So we're about 80 degrees there as well. This is, I, I'm not sure what part of the motor this is. If this is the um, second stage or 
what I just noticed that it was really hot so I was taking some readings on it so with the after cooler installed I'm happy to have this project done it's something I've been wanting to do for a few years um, so I decided to go ahead and, and tackle it get it done um, been in the uh, copper it's not too pretty I haven't really done any any tube bending before so this was my first go at it to, with anything substantial other than you know just a you know a little piece here or there this is the first time I've really done you know where I've, where I've routed it around things and, and all that so I'm happy with how it came out um, one of the requirements in doing this for me was I wanted, I didn't want the copper, any of the, anything I add onto it, um, to be outside of the footprint of the compressor. I wanted everything to be within the, the space that it's already taking up. Um, so other than it added a couple inches on the back, which to, that's no big deal. I was, you know, I'm concerned with the side, the height out in front. I didn't want to have anything further outside the, uh, the compressor. So I, I, I accomplished that and I'm happy with how it came out and I'm glad that it's done. So I hope this maybe can answer some questions that you might have or you know, give you incentive to get out there and, and do yours. But it works as I expected it, and I mean, everybody's already said it's, it, it works, so I didn't think it wouldn't. And I used the stacked plate oil cooler instead of the tube and fin, um, and it works, works fine. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with the, with the performance. Um, so, so for right now, it's going to stay like this.